Would you visit an island if it was known to have the cleanest air in the world? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Amazing scenery with mountains and lakes. A place where you can walk to views out to the ocean and then drive a few hours to trek in the snow with no one else in sight. But there's a catch. The animals sound like this. I'm being serious, these are actually animals, they're called Tasmanian Devils, but I'm gonna touch on these more. But if you're new here, my name's Grant Ambrose, I'm from Sydney, Australia. Here on YouTube, I post videos that show you how to use WordPress to build a better website for your business and make more money online. I also post behind the scene vlogs of my life where I try and find a balance between sitting at the computer, making money, and you know, getting away from the computer, getting outside and trying to live an actual life. So if that sounds like something you're interested in seeing pop up in your subscription, here on YouTube, consider subscribing. So when people imagine coming to Australia, they probably imagine themselves lying on our sun-drenched beaches with amazing surf or going to the outback and seeing a kangaroo or even getting a photo in Byron Bay. But over the last couple of years, I found myself personally gravitating to trying to take trips to colder places. You know, think of these cozy vibes, fireplaces, snow, great hikes, places to take really good photos. What's happened? This is just ice. It's like an ice bridge. It collapsed. I guess it's probably because I've spent my whole entire life five minutes from the beach where it's warm and sunny for most of the year and when I want to go away, I want change, I want something different. And with that said, this year, especially after COVID, me and my girlfriend Maddie have really been grinding with work. I was blogging consistently and I'd been putting out videos here on YouTube quite regularly. Maddie being a tattoo artist, she couldn't work at all during COVID. So you can imagine there's a lot of people out there that once COVID restrictions were eased, they're wanting to come and get tattooed. and so she's been working trying to get through that backlog of people and so one night we're sitting on the couch and we're talking and we're like i feel really burnt out grant i think we need a reset we ended up mentally flipping a coin and it came down to two different places. So the first is, you know, should we head to far north Queensland where we could wear singlets and thongs and shorts and scuba dive around the white sand beaches and then explore the rainforest and the warmer weather? Or should we try and go to Tasmania, the coldest part of Australia, but we have the chance of seeing snow? And well, you've probably seen it from the title of this video or the thumbnail. We just got back from a two week trip down to Tasmania and it really is is a place you need to add to your bucket list. But have a look at this, the fog, the fog is half over here. So it goes from complete fog to clear mountain with the lake. We actually ended up hiring a camper van and we got to see a large portion of the island. We saw some amazing landscapes and mountains and lakes. We hiked the south to see some amazing cliff faces and we even managed to find... What have you got? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> now what's really funny is leading up to this, whenever we'd say to someone it's the middle of winter and we're going to be going to Tasmania, they'd say, why? It's so cold. But truth be told, coming back, we absolutely loved the fact that we went in winter. It's quieter, it's cheaper, and it's really not that cold. You just have to make sure you dress appropriately for where you're going. It is a bubble rainbow. We're not a bad boy. Now, I will say that we've never vlogged properly in public as we've been traveling, but later on in the vlog and future episodes, we'll be talking and explaining what's going on. But I just wanted to put that here in this video. So sit back, enjoy, and let's kick off this winter in Tasmania series with us arriving at Sydney airport. So enjoy. Mona? Can't wait 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just waiting for our bags. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So once we got off the plane in Tasmania, the first thing that we had to do was go to our hotel. So we ended up deciding to stay in a hotel the first night and picking up the caravan the second day. We really just wanted to give ourselves, you know, a night to settle in and then a full day to go sort out the van, get some shopping, pack the fridge in the camper van before we headed around the coast and stayed in our first night's camp. So we got in, we went straight to our hotel and we would recommend staying in this hotel. I'm going to put some B-roll on the screen now. It was called the Hat. Hadley's Hotel, and it was really one of my favorite places that I've ever stayed in. Oh, I think it's pretty fancy. Everything about this hotel I loved. So firstly, you're probably going to go on somewhere and focus on the location. This was in the heart and center of the Hobart CBD, which meant that we could walk everywhere. I think there's scooters there, but we didn't use them. We basically just walked wherever to get our, our steps up for the day. <sighs> I'm one of those people that counts their steps. We checked in to the Hadley's Hotel, and what I really loved about this hotel is just the layout. So the rooms, they all face down into a main central foyer bit, which is where we ate breakfast the next day. It had a checkered pattern, there were chandeliers, and it was playing classical, like, olden jazz music, and that would sort of go through that, um, through that lobby into your windows in your rooms. All around, this hotel was reasonably priced. I'll put on the screen here what we ended up paying and where we booked from, and it was just a really good hotel that we would recommend you checking out if you're going to stay in Hobart. So once we checked into our hotel, it was time to go out and explore Hobart. I want ice cream yet. All right, so where are we? Uh, we are on the harbor. So what's here? <laughs> Is there like pubs, clubs? I haven't been here since I was like 12. Give me yeah, a break. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start a posse. Yeah. Come on. Come on, <laughs> uh, you scared him off. Wait, come back. So this restaurant here, we got a little bit tourist trapped, meaning that it's in a central part of Hobart, like Hobart being the city. This is at the wharf where a lot of people go. And so it's probably got a lot of foot traffic going there, but it's not necessarily the best restaurant. Now, it wasn't cheap. And yeah, the food was, we haven't eaten that many oysters, but all I can say is we had better oysters later on in our vlog series, which you'll see in an upcoming video. And you know, the position's nice here on the water, but you had to deal with this. He's back. <laughs> what do you reckon, Darcy? You gonna get in there and fight for a chip? <laughs> And just like that, our first day came to an end. The next morning was the exciting one. We were about to pick up our caravan, but first we had some breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey? 
So you start running like immediately, it's so cold. <laughs> Okay, just finished up with that run and that was so hard. Anyway, Maddie's just kept running to do one more cave to finish at three. But look at this view. Found it. Yeah. They're struggling to fit everything back in, it, in their bags. <laughs> it's got so much stuff, just winter stuff. It just takes up so much room, the bulky jackets. We just arrived yesterday, so we're here for two weeks. We're just about to... Um... Babe, we got the van. We got the van. And this here is Topsy. So this is the van that we did all the traveling in. It's a high roof, high ace, but I'm gonna talk more about it in just a second. Here we Another go. High top. Luxury. Woo. We're ready. Ready to go. Ready? Ready for an adventure. First drive. So easy to drive, so smooth. So the van that we picked up is a petrol. Now I have a Toyota Hiace, it's a 2010 model, pretty much exactly the same as this one, except it doesn't have the high roof. And what we did is we were weighing up whether or not to ship my van from Sydney over via the Spirit of Tasmania. Okay, so it's a big ship, you can put your car on it. And I could take the van from Sydney down to Tasmania and then we could drive it there. But by the time we worked it out, if you go to the website of Spirit of Tasmania, it ended up being better for us to just fly down to Tasmania and rent a van for the 10 days or whatever that we had it versus getting my van and shipping it down there and not taking the flights down ourselves. And so that's what we ended up doing. So if you're looking at doing that, you have a van maybe in New South Wales or somewhere else in Australia, and you're thinking about just taking that down to Tasmania, I would definitely weigh it up. Now, the second reason that we went ahead and rented a van is because I'm looking to maybe sell my van and get one with a high top because we're taking it away quite frequently you know, it's before COVID and we're starting to again now as we move into summer. And a lot of the time that we go away, it rains. And so we really wanted to go and hire a van that had a high top so we could experience what it'd be like and really just cement the idea in our brains that it's gonna be a lot better than what we have currently and it's worth the extra money. And spoiler alert, going away in this van to Tasmania with a high top, it really is worth the extra money. It goes from not being able to stay in the van during when it's raining and be able to cook and do stuff like that, where usually when we're in the lower roof of my, my van currently, we have to go to a pub and you know spend money and this and that. It's just a little bit uh, annoying to be able to just park, you know, wherever we are, stand up in there, cook and just play uh, chess, just so much more room. So we would highly recommend, especially for the extra storage, which you guys will see throughout this video, the higher top roof was the go. So the next thing that I want to point out with this van before we get back to the vlog is that this is petrol. So currently my van is diesel and, you know, I've been, I've pretty much never drove a van that isn't diesel. It's, and so I got in this car, I was like, it's so responsible and then it clicked that it's petrol. So it just felt like it was more agile, like we could accelerate more. And I actually preferred that. So from like a fuel economy perspective, I don't know which one works out better. I don't know which one's more expensive to maintain. If you know, drop a comment below because you might help us make a decision for when we go and purchase our new van. But as far as me driving my daily driver now, it's diesel versus this petrol that we rented in Tasmania. I preferred the petrol and it felt like it made this trip more enjoyable, especially on highways where you're accelerating and stuff like that. That's just my personal opinion. So once we'd picked up the van, we stopped off at a place called Whisk & Co, which was highly rated on Google. We just picked up a couple of sandwiches, which was really weird because we don't normally order sandwiches, but these ones looked really, really good. And the reviews said that they were amazing and they were. Then we went and picked up some groceries to pack the van. Drop it in. It's my favorite road trip piece. Maddie had some fun with the claw machine. And then we were back on the road and heading out of Hobart to our first destination up the coast, which was Freysenay. <laughs> She's right. So may as well close my eyes and just hope for the best. <laughs> Freysenay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go that one. So when we're in the bottle shop, I decided that I'm only gonna drink Tasmanian beer. And Maddie's got a cider, and we just reached. Go on. <laughs> Frojne. <laughs> <laughs> which is on the east coast of Tasmania so we've got a campsite here just for tonight and uh, it's really cool because where our campsite is it's like where we are then there's a small bush and then there's a, a beach and yeah so we've just arrived it's sort of twilight I don't think the iPhone is going to pick it up because it is quite dark but uh, yeah I mean we're going to go have our first drink for the van trip got our thermals on so thermals making use of them because they weren't cheap so head to toe merinos Marin to head to toe merinos <laughs> Hey, babe. Okay, so we just got back from the beach and that was that was a lot of fun. And we're about to make wraps. So wraps are the easiest thing to do when you're in a van and you're camping. It's basically just, I'll show you what we got. But yeah, we just got some chicken, a lettuce pack. Uh, we got some capsicum, red onion, cherry tomatoes, avocado salt and pepper and then we got a little bit of cheese and we have some chutney and hummus <laughs> there's, there's poo on yours yes yeah, so i'm kind of animal <laughs> <laughs> what we got it off but now it's stuck on the brush <laughs> oh my god oh my god how good is this oh my god i'm so excited how good is this <laughs> there's so much more room all right, we're going to listen to a podcast and we'll be up for sunrise. In the next episode, we wake up to the first sunrise of the trip. We check out the famous Wineglass Bay and then we head further north up the coast to the red rocks of the Bay of Fires. There's dancing, a fire, incredible sunrise, and this is where we start to make our way to the snowy mountains known as Cradle Mountain. Click here to watch that episode now.